more on Samsung's big launch. We're joined by Rebecca Lee, the industry analyst at Ultimeter. Rebecca, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Michelle. A big day for South Korea. Samsung, they launched the Note. Samsung's trying seemingly to differentiate itself with this curved screen. Is that enough? The curved screen is, is an important feature because it's getting very difficult to tell the Note 2 from the 3 from the 4. This way, if you lay out all that money for a new phone, your friends and, and your colleagues are going to see right away, oh, you've got the new device. Right. And that cool factor is very, very important for a lot of people. But Apple is strongly rumored to be getting into the market with more utility that I'd like to see. Well, before we talk about Apple, and of course they have their supposed rumored iPhone 6 launch happening in a couple of days' time, what are some of the more impressive features of uh, the Samsung Edge? I do like the curve. I like the fact that they're extending battery life. I like some of the new photo features. They're making it a lot easier and quicker to take selfies and other types of photographs. How are they doing that? Um, it's less of a, of a focus and more of a kind of point and shoot with, without so much user interface. All right. People are going to like People that. People love the selfies, Rebecca. They absolutely they love the selfies. They certainly do. Uh, now, what they're not loving so much, though, globally, is Samsung. Because if we look at market share, Samsung accounted for about one in four smartphones sold around the world, down from about one third a year ago. Uh, that's according to research from Strategy Analytics. Who is Samsung losing market share to? There is competition everywhere in the smart, smartphone market, and people are maybe panning out buying new smartphones. We've seen massive, massive adaptation. More than half the adults in the United States now have smartphones. Smartphones have overtaken the use of dumb phones or regular cell phones. Once the market's saturated like that, you're not going to see the hockey stick growth you saw two, three, four years ago when ad adoption was at its peak. Well, one of the reasons, perhaps, that Samsung is diversifying into other products, including uh, this new uh, virtual reality uh, headgear that they launched today, Gear VR. Is this technology unique? Is this competition to... Uh, Google Glass, or is this more aimed at gamers? This is more aimed at gamers, and it's more akin to a virtual reality firm that Facebook acquired earlier this year. But the entire wearables market is something right. that Samsung has been expanding into. They launched a smartwatch to no great advantage about a year ago. But I'm not convinced that the market is looking for watches. Many of us have stopped wearing watches because we have smartphones that tell us what time it but is. But hence potentially the smart watch combining the two. There's the smart watch. Apple's also got wearables that connect with your fitness trackers and all kinds of other ways of creating this sentient layer over what you do and who you are. It, still remains to be seen what consumers are going to accept and what they're going to discard. Right, well, let's talk about Apple. The Samsung launch comes uh, six days before Apple's big event in California, where it is speculated that Apple will reveal the latest iPhone. They say timing is everything. How does the timing factor in here that Samsung beat Apple to the punch in this launch? Is it relevant? Is it not that relevant? It's the fall season. They're trying to make an impact. They're trying to make this the go-to Christmas gift. So it's never too early to get into that market, which is why we're seeing this happen so quickly after Labor Day. And there's talk that Apple could be coming out with a bigger screen itself, uh, taking a leaf from Samsung's uh, book uh, that bigger is better. What, what can we expect there? A lot of us believe that we'll finally, finally see the, the Apple Phablet, the cross between the phone and the tablet, that the Galaxy has been so successful and gained so much market share. Um, for Samsung, we think that Apple's gonna, gonna maybe copycat that and let people have their bigger screens to play around on. Something of a bridge between the iPad and the iPhone. So you think that that could pose a big problem for Samsung? I think it's going to pose more competition for Samsung as people get more visual, going back to what you said about selfies, which people love, with their devices. They love to browse the web on them, play games, take pictures. That requires a bigger screen. Well, back to this curved screen. What can Samsung do to keep ahead of the game? 
Well, the curved screen is one experiment. We'll see how consumers like that. It allows consumers to multitask with a phone or put a phone down on a table but still cast an eye on it and see where, where an email is coming. Now, you mentioned this utility mm -hmm. uh, play and that Apple has Samsung beat there. Explain what that's about. I don't know that Apple does, but Apple is very strongly rumored to be bringing out a retail payment system baked into the new iPhone so that you can walk into a store and conclude a transaction, not with cash, not with a credit card, but with your phone. This has long been a dream of the mobile internet, mobile commerce, and if Apple comes out with this, that's a big edge over Samsung because this is something that people need. People go to stores and buy stuff every day. Well, you know, there could be major security concerns uh, regarding that. We're going to have to leave it at that now. Um, thank you so much, Rebecca Lieb, Industry Analyst at Ultimate Group.